All right, what's going on? It's winter right now. I'm doing a lot of fishing with the more winter time traditional types of baits, which are like crankbaits, spinnerbaits, vibrating jigs, regular jigs, all that type of stuff. That's what we've been fishing with a ton lately. And today we're gonna to talk about another little tip for crankbait fishing. I know a lot of y'all probably already know this. A lot of people probably know this, but I have seen, I have some guys in my boat or talked to some guys that did not know exactly how to do this. And we're gonna talk about how to optimize exactly what you're trying to do to get these crankbaits to run the way you want them to run so first and foremost this is going to be kind of the entire deal with how you want to fish a crankbait so you want to kind of gauge everything like i said as far as in my treble hook video you gauge everything kind of based on the system that you're trying to use it and this is no different if you're going to use a more of a super small profile flat sided bait you really have to downsize everything this right here is the spro little john md small profile bait very thin body but it still has a long lip to it so this is going to get down eight nine ten feet i can get down a little bit deeper than that with this exact rod and reel but what the purpose of this setup is i want to be able to throw this bait as far as possible use lighter line with a flat sided bait because what that's going to do is a flat sided bait already doesn't have quite as much thump doesn't have quite as much wobble and whenever you downsize this line it actually has less resistance in the water and it allows this bait to actually work a little bit better a little more efficiently because has less drag on the actual line that's connected to the bait so that's going to allow that bait to get a little more more wobble get a little bit deeper dive a little bit harder it gets it actually gets down to depth even faster so everybody's been sitting there where you cast up to the bank you reel your crankbait down, it takes you four or five turns of the reel handle to get your bait down to the bottom and start deflecting with contact. When you downsize line, not only do you get it deeper, you get it down deeper faster. So where it will take you four turns of the reel handle to get it down, now it'll take you two and a half or three turns of the reel handle to get that bait to the depth that you want to get it to. And what that's going to do is every turn of the reel handle is like 25 to 35 inches of, of line that you're pulling up. So you got it down two feet, you got two feet more of that bait in the strike zone every single cast so that's why i you know kind of scale everything based on what i'm trying to do and if i'm going to use something like let me grab me a little bit different type of a bait this right here is a square bill this is a fat pop of 55 i'm going to throw something like this i'm not going to downsize line as much because it has such a harder thump initially i can get away with throwing a little bit bigger line i can throw 12 i can throw 15 i can throw 17 and this bait has so much thump to it naturally i'm still gonna get that thump out of it I'm still gonna get the desired depth because it's such an aggressive action. So it doesn't seem to affect these types of baits nearly as much as it does flat sided baits. And then another thing is this bait right here is one of those that you wanna get to depth. This is the Spro Rock Crawler. You wanna get this to depth or to the desired depth as quickly as possible. So it's another bait that I'm gonna throw on 10, 12, 14 pound line, a little bit lighter line than you, know, you might be comfortable throwing, but that's gonna help me get this bait down onto the bottom and then reel that bait extremely slowly and keep that bait down on the bottom so that's kind of the, the types of reasons that i'm going to throw lighter line in the winters because i want to keep it down i want to get it down fast and i want to be able to reel it slow and keep it down now a big tip this is the big thing that is very important for crankbait fishing whenever i first started you know really getting into crankbait fishing whenever i was you know a teenager or in, in, you know a teenager i would actually go to, to a swim pool and I would throw the crankbait in the swimming pool and I would take my crankbait box, sit down, and I would tune every single one of them until they ran perfectly. I mean, if it, I, I would reel it as fast as I possibly could and if that bait would run to the left or the right at all, I would tune it, I would tweak it till I got it to where I could reel it as fast as I possibly could and that bait would come straight back to me. And the reason you wanna tune your bait at extremely high speed is because you're not gonna be, be reeling that fast on the water. And the slower you reel it, the better it stays in tune, or the better it keeps its, its direct line and it stays on track a little bit better. So I wanna keep this bait, I wanna make sure I tune it where I reel it extremely fast, so that when I'm on the water and I reel it slower, it's, it's gonna be even more exact and even more perfect, and it's not gonna blow out or get sideways at all. So I'm gonna take y'all through the adjustments you have to make, and I tune baits a little bit differently based on if they're a flat sided bait like this one, a deeper diving bait like this one, or if they're a square bill like that one that I showed y'all right there. So first things first, I'm gonna show y'all what a crooked one runs like, and this one actually runs good out of the package. So I'm gonna take my pliers right here, and I'm actually going to mess it up on purpose. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna, if you see right here what I'm grabbing, got a little bit of grass on here. I was just uh, throwing this thing in a little grass bed right beside me. 
gonna take these pliers, the actual, not the split ring, the actual line tie that's molded into the bill. I'm gonna grab that, and I'm gonna just bend it a little bit crooked. I'm gonna bend it just a little bit out of whack, just to, just for educational purposes, I'm gonna bend it just a little bit out of whack. So, now we're going to turn around, and I'm gonna show y'all how this bait looks in the water now that it does not run correctly. So, we'll be right back. All right. So as you can see, I barely bent that little natural line tie. And then see how bad that bait's off track? So whenever I reel it, it pops up to the, at about the same spot every single time. And if I reel it real slow, it actually still looks like it's tuned in. But if I reel it fast, it'll pop out of the water and blow out because that's actually the way that it's running. It's running extremely hard from the way the I'm facing it's running extremely hard to my right so as you can see it's almost laid over on the side and running all the way over that way so I'm obviously going to want to fix this and I do this whenever I get um, a bunch of new baits in stock I'll always go test them all and make sure they're all tuned in and there's some types of baits that need to be tuned worse than others so the flat sided ones need to be tuned more than the more of the round style ones and the medium divers or the deep divers need to be tuned more than a shallow diver because it's just catching so much more water. So it's a lot more water displacement. It's actually making it, you know, get even more off track because it's catching more water. Now, the way I'm going to fix this is the bait runs through the water facing me just like this. And it's running this way. So it's running to my right the way that I'm sitting. I guess that'd be the bait's left. But to my right, it's running this way. So I'm going to take this, grab that natural line tie, and I'm actually bend it back. I'm just going to bend it towards my left try to get it a little bit straighter a little bit better and then we're going to make another cast with it this is exactly this is real time how i would tune a bait make another cast with it we really okay it's still running a little bit to the right but you can see it never blew out that time so it never came up and popped up out of the surface until it got a lot closer to me so what that means is it's a little bit closer but it's still not perfect that time went the other way what that means is something was wrong with the bait like the hooks being hooked to each other which made it there we go so let's try it one more time it still should run a little bit to the right just not quite as bad as it was so we got it about halfway there i would say so from here same thing just the way it runs through the water we're going to grab that natural line tie the one that's molded in and we're going to bend it a little bit further to the left so now i've done this a lot so i'm pretty sure right here we bent it just a hair too far so let's go back to the water and now i'm pretty sure it's going to run to my left so, yep, now you see it ran to my left right there. And it's not running super bad, but it is running pretty bad to the left. So now we're actually gonna have to bend it back the opposite way. So you can see the way the bait's chasing. You can actually see the, the natural line tie being a little bit bent right there. So now I'm gonna actually grab it and bend it to the right. Grab it, bend it. That looks about like that's gonna do it to me. Maybe just a hair more. That looks about like it's going to do it to me. And a lot of times, you cannot look at it and see that it's perfectly straight. That does not always mean that it's going to be directly in line. So whenever it looks perfectly straight, sometimes that does not mean exactly what you would think it means. So let's see. See how it does this time. Back to the water. Reel it in. Now that feels about right. So let me I'm gonna reel it a little bit faster this time. By that time, it, it tailed off a little bit to the left at the very end. Okay, that time went perfectly straight back. It's still going just a hair to the left. I mean, just a tiny amount to the left. So I'm going to get it back. I'm going to hit it one more time. And let's see what it does now. I think now we've got us a perfectly tuned crankbait. Back to the right. That's the thing about these super narrow baits. They're very difficult to tune. That's why it's so important to tune them. Because they get out of whack very, very easily. You can see I'm barely touching it and get it out of whack. So that's it right there. That time, that was it. Whenever you have it perfectly tuned, it actually hunts a little bit. It actually will go right and left, but this time, this is a fishable crankbait.
This is good. This one you can throw. So that's what I do to all my crankbaits whenever I first get them. I come out here and I test them all. I'll, get, I'll put them all in the box. Sometimes I'll put on a snap. I'll put on a snap, you know, just so I can go through a bunch of them very, very quickly. And I'll take all the different types that I get. And the Spro ones are usually pretty good out the, out the box. But whenever I get some handmade baits or these flatter ones, I always want to come back out and double check them and stuff like that. So I'm going to put on a different one. And I'm going to show you all kind of exactly what you all are looking for to how you want to tune a different one so this one right here these narrow ones these flat sided ones they're very very difficult to tune they take small little tweaks and small little adjustments and that's why the smallest thing can get them out of whack so we're gonna put on a flat a square bill and i'll show you all kind of the way that i adjust that and kind of how, how it's a little bit different I get this question a ton. The knot that I tie is called a double pitson. It's also called a double San Diego jam, but the double San Diego jam has a couple variations to it. And as far as I know, the double pitson only has one variation. And this is the one that I tie. So I, I think the official best name for it is the double pitson. That's why I tie. On all fluorocarbon applications, except for flipping. That's why I tie. So there's a couple properties in baits that make them where some need to be tweaked more than others. And I'll kind of walk you all through exactly what makes a bait have to be tweaked and what makes it not need to be tweaked. And some need extremely small, minor, little bitty tiny adjustments like the one I just had, the Spro Little John MD. Small, tiny adjustments on that bait make a huge difference. On a round bodied square bill type of a bait, let me grab this Little John. You can see the differences in the body size right here. This Fat Papa 55 that I have tied on right now, this one right here, it's actually a whole lot fatter, wider, round body bait. And this Little John is a flat sided bait. So what that means is this kind of a bait is going to be a lot more buoyant. This bait is going to be a lot more aggressive in action because it's got more buoyancy to it. So what you have is you have the bait being extremely buoyant and you have the bill pulling it down and rolling it. That's why the square bill has such a hard thump and a hard roll because of the buoyancy it has in the back. Now. That makes it where a super small, tiny tweak doesn't make that bait get off track nearly as much as it does the other types of baits. Another thing, whenever that line tie or hook hanger, whatever you want to call it, is molded into the actual nose of the bait, like this one is, it's molded into the nose of the bait and still being nosed instead of being molded into the actual bill. So let me grab one of these other ones. Like, here's a rock crawler right here. Spro rock crawler. This one is actually in the bill, as you can see right here. It seems like whenever they're molded into the bill, you have to tweak them a little bit more, and it takes a, you know smaller tweaks to actually adjust it. Whenever they're molded into the nose of the bait, they're very easy to keep them in tune. They come out of the box tuned a whole lot more often. And if you want to tune them, you have to make a lot bigger adjustments to the bait. So that's one of the things that you want to look for in a bait. Your baits that are, you know, further down the bill and narrower bodies they're going to need more tuning than others typically out of the box and they're going to need slighter smaller adjustments whereas a square bill it's going to take bigger adjustments and it's not going to need it nearly as often another thing this is something that i've done i tried it i didn't really like it i didn't think it was very good but i've heard of people doing good in tournaments doing this technique and it's actually taking a square bill and if you're going to be fishing like floating docks or something like that you'll actually take your square bill and bend it bend that thing to adjust it out of you know like the way it naturally is on purpose like bend it to make it run one way or another on purpose so if you're fishing docks you can get that bait to go and deflect with the posts or you can get it to actually run underneath the tips of floating docks now i've heard of people doing that i've seen people doing it in tournaments and stuff like that every time i've done it i feel like i didn't get any bites because the bait didn't run straight enough but that's another thing to think about and to remember if you ever need something to get underneath the dock or to you know like actually connect with the dock and get a little bit more deflection and stuff like that there'll be something to remember so you can Use that little tweak as well so this uh square bill if i had to guess i'd say this was going to run good straight out of the box because that's just how they do i just want to take y'all through and walk y'all through what makes a crankbait need adjusting and you know kind of how to do it and all that type of stuff and sometimes you'll be catching fish and you'll catch one fish and you'll catch a big one he might get you hung up around a dock post or something and you really pull on him harder than normal and you'll bend that crankbait out you know like you'll bend it out of kind of the 
natural flow. I don't even know what to say, but you'll bend it kind of out of shape by kind of over fighting a fish. And whenever that happens, you have to tweak it and stuff like that. So it's not always just out of the box or you can throw it and you can hit a dock with it. You can hit a rock with it, get it hung up, be snatched on it, whatever it takes. You can get the crankbait bent to where you have to actually tune it and adjust it and get it back. So just want to bring that up. Had a guy in my boat not too long ago, was throwing a crankbait and he didn't know exactly how to tune it. So I showed him and it made me think, Maybe a lot of other people don't know that as well. So I wanted to kind of bring that tip to y'all. Let y'all know that. That's how to fix your crankbait. That's what I do. I do it to every single crankbait I have. If I'm going to fish a tournament, I know I'm going to be cranking. I'll take the last hour of practice or whatever I'm doing. And I'll take it and I'll go through five or six crankbaits. Make sure I've got me five or six. So that's a couple to tie on. And then a couple extras to get me through that tournament. And then if I'm in a tournament and my crankbait's not running perfectly, I'll always make sure that I tune it and get it running exactly right. So I think it's an extremely important aspect of crankbait fishing and if y'all you know go through yours and make sure they're they're running straight i'm sure y'all catch a few more too so just want to bring that to y'all's attention i appreciate it see if we can't catch the bank bass on one of these dang crankbaits so appreciate it guys